Good afternoon, Noria. Good afternoon to you, Mr. Collins. I am um, welcome to CWS as it is. Thank you. It is an honor to be on the show. I've been a very big fan of this show, so thank really you. a pleasure for me to be featured as a guest. Thank so, you thank so you. much. Thank you. I'm really honored. Um, tell us a little bit about who you are and your business, NG Communications. Okay, well, I'm 24 years old, Muriel Kamal Gerard. I am an award-winning actress, media personality, director of NG Communications, which is a communications company that provides promotional sports modeling, event hosting, advertisement production, and PR to a lesser extent. And I'm also the director of the One Act Foundation, which uses theater arts to promote mental health and foster positive youth development. Currently, I'm a finalist in the Miss Royal Ghana 2016 pageant representing Region 8, the Paris community, which is located in the arts of the Highlands of Guyana, and so I'm really excited about that here in New York. So, tell us what, how did you actually get started in this? And um, is it possible to get some light on you? Because most of the light is behind you. Is it possible to get some on your face? Trying to. Is this better? Um, a little better. Mm. You changed the background, didn't you? I did because it actually got a lot darker. Than oh, it. I see. Well, thanks, yeah. thanks for that. Thanks for uh, being so considerate. Yes. Yeah, so, how did you actually got get started? Well, I became employed at the state-owned media National Communications Network back in 2010. At the time, I was employed as the announcer producer for radio. At the time, I was the youngest announcer producer. And what happened is I noticed that there was a, a high demand for particular skills that I possessed, uh, which were, you know, voice acting or voice and voice. I was being called upon quite often to do ads for radio uh, or for television commercials. And I was also being called upon to represent companies as a promotional sports model uh, for various reasons, perhaps. And quite interestingly, a lot of times they would have a public relations uh, personnel within the company. But that person would either be too timid to try. Yeah, it'd be a lot, very timid. Um, it started happening at Guy Expo. We have what you call an outside broadcast where you go to, you know, on the outside and you do a broadcast from the location about whatever product or service the business is offering. And uh, it started at Guy Expo. You'd show up to a particular booth and you'd expect that they'd have somebody there to speak with you and to enlighten you on what the corporation has to offer to the general public. And you'd turn up and nobody would be willing to speak. So I said, you know what, I have no problem speaking on your behalf, but I am certainly going to turn this into a lucrative business idea. And so that's exactly what I did. I also started hosting events at the age of 18. I was called upon to host the gt and Jingle and Song competition. And at the time, that was something that was very new to me. So when I made the foray into event hosting, I was very nervous. I could remember standing backstage and hearing the, the person outside just give the introduction, introducing me as host. And I just really wanted to run off of the stage. Like I, I did not want to be there anymore. Um, but <laughs> I can remember just saying, you brought yourself this far. You need to just continue with it all to commit to your commitment. And I did well. I received a lot of positive feedback. A lot of persons thought that I was reading from a teleprompter, but I am fortunate to have the gift of memory. So that really helps in this field of work, especially when you have to host some live event. Um, sometimes promoters come backstage and they make changes to the script and you might not have a pen and you have to remember it and you have to keep the running so, order. So what, uh, so what do you... what do you demanding field, but it's something that I love to do. So what do you find most, um, in the beginning, what did you find most challenging about this particular um, enterprise? I think conflicting when it comes to ideas. I decided to do this. Another reason why, because I would sit and I'd go through, I'd play probably like over 100 or 200 ads um, during my shift. And all of the ads, although they were voiced by different people, they all sounded the same. There was not a creative element. There was nothing that really you know, stood out to make you remember a particular ad. 
they all sort of follow the pattern of if you need something, here's where you should go. This is the number to call. This is the location. And it was very bland. And I thought, you know, take a look at uh, the Western media and, and the advertisements that are produced in the United States or the UK and these other developed countries and think about how much it pulls you in, how effective the ad is. Sometimes the ad, you probably only saw it once, but it stays with you long after you reviewed it. And I'm like, I want to bring that sort of creativity to the Guyanese market. Um, so that's what I, it, that's what I began to and do. Which what was sometimes the difficulty is some persons might come to you because they want to uh, sort of avoid having to pay to for somebody to conceptualize and script an ad. They just come with with the basic details and they say, "Oh, we just want you to voice this. You know, we don't really want a new script." So that's one of the major challenges I do continue to face. So what happens then? Do you refuse the the the, the business if no. it's a script you don't like or what? No, we do try to arrive at compromise. I try to just explain to them how much more effective the ad will be if it has some sort of um, a creative element to it that will cause people to really think about it and cause it to stay with them. And sometimes I do try to influence them a little bit and I'm usually successful. Uh, so we do arrive at that sort of compromise. Um, in other cases, I'd probably just voice the ad for them as is and just have to beat myself up Why, why communication? Was that natural, natural for you? I think it was. Um, initially, I was not aware that this was a skill that I possessed, but I think what is very important for young people who are thinking about getting into business is you have to, you have to interact with people who know you. I'm not just talking about the people who you add on Facebook or social media and who leave comments on your profiles or your posts, but people who really understand you and know the type of intrinsic skills and qualities that you possess. I grew up in the church and I would often be called upon to probably do some sort of a presentation, make an announcement after church. If they have a little activity, they'd call on my sister and I to uh, find a creative way of communicating that message to the, to the congregation. And I remember my pastor's wife pulling me aside one time and saying, you have the gift of speech. And at first it didn't make sense to me, uh, but I think the more I, when, when she said that and she identified that, that strength in me, I started to pay more attention to it and I started to develop it. So I started to listen to how I speak. I recorded myself a few times and at first I couldn't stand the sound of my own voice. And I learned eventually some breathing techniques through the theater arts program that I attended the workshop that was hosted and organized by Ms. Jamadu Nasamentos when I really got to understand enunciation and pronunciation and how you can intonate your voice and how you can really use your voice in the best possible way. And Dr. Uh, Mr. Russell and Pastor was the one who led that workshop and he's an excellent speaker. He has a really good communication skill. So I was really grateful for that opportunity. Uh, so my advice to young people would be try to identify the things that people come to you for. What do people seek you out to do? Um, I know with my brother, it was identified at a very young age. He's very good when it comes to fixing things. He'd be the one that we'd go to to fix phones or whatever. So he has that natural ability. Um, but you have to uh, and you won't always discover it for yourself. Sometimes you have to do a lot of introspection, but also interaction as well. It comes out in, it comes out in that form. So um, how do you find customers? Um, word of mouth has been very, very kind to me. I also advertise my services quite a lot on my social media. I think social media is a very big marketing tool and advertising tool. And so what I try to do is whenever I post an event or I produce an ad, I try to upload it as, as quickly as I can because I do have a large following in social media and it grows every day for that and grateful. Uh, so, but I have a, quite a lot of customers who come to me uh, with referrals from some other satisfied customer. So I really have been uh, able to establish a really strong clientele and it continues to grow. Since, since you've started your business, what are three core values you you live by you run your business by and and especially for and i'm asking you this question especially for young people who might be tuned in here tonight and need some advice in in that regard what are three core values you um have ad adopted for your business 
So you have to understand first and foremost, what makes you different? What is different about your brand and what you have to add to the market? Because when you're opening a business, yours might not be the only kind of that business or type of business available on, uh, on the market at that particular time. There might be other similar businesses um, that have been in establishment probably long before yours have um, been in you know, an establishment. So you have to understand what makes yours different. What's the differentiating factor? Um, and you have to stand by that. You also have to be very passionate and knowledgeable about your field of business, understand, you know, how it's changing um, and understand how you can stay relevant and how you can keep up with all of the changes that are happening. And you also have to be very passionate about what you do. Passionate and confident in your ability. I know for, for me, being a young person and involved in business, I had to learn how to be confident. I had to learn how to sell myself to my clients because at the end of the day, somebody is investing their hard-earned money in you and hoping that you will be able to uh, pro, you know, provide a service that is of good quality. And you do not want to disappoint. You want to ensure that your customers are always satisfied. And I believe as long as you're confident, you're passionate, and you know your market, and you also know what the differentiating factor is and how you can you know, make your mark and do something different and do something meaningful and impactful, then you will begin to grow. You, you move from, from um, you know, step to step, level to level. Your business will grow as well. And you, you'll notice that your clients will be very happy satisfied at the end of the day and that is very important let me go to the chat room ralph asked how did you learn to price your business i spoke to persons who are already in the business i think that's another important thing is to have mentors because you're making a foray into a field that you know you would have not known anything about or you would have not been actively involved in so it's very wise for you to sit and speak with individuals for me i i turn to um margaret lawrence and uncle ron robinson and some other well-known uh media personalities and persons who've been doing voiceovers and and, and these kind of things for a very long time and i sat with them and i spoke to them um and a recurring statement that they made is you need to know your value uh and you don't you don't settle for less and you don't um, undervalue yourself. You don't just sell yourself short. So you have to know that. And I think that comes through really having conversations with people who have been living in or, or doing work in the field. Are you tough? I would like to think so. <laughs> <laughs> Ralph asked again, what, why do people seek you out? What is it about you? I think I've established myself as being a very articulate person. I'm very eloquent and very professional. Um, I am also, I work very well under, under uh, pressure. I know a lot of persons have come to me at the very last minute, which I often caution them not to do, but sometimes the way uh, programs are set up or the way internal, you know, they may have their own internal challenges. They reach out to you uh, probably a day or two before the event. And I know this happens, especially when it comes to event hosting. Um, so they might be working on all the other aspects of ensuring the event is, you know, goes successfully and runs smoothly. And then they realize, hey, we don't have somebody to, to MC this event. We don't have a compare. Um, who can we go to? And I, I, I do take a lot of pride in being able to, you know, with, with short notice, still be able to uh, produce quality work and to work at an optimal, you know, a really good level for my clients. Mm -hmm. So a lot of persons do rely on that. Where do you see NG Communications in 10 years? I would like to have a few branches across the region. I certainly want to be able to provide employment for more young people in the creative industry. Uh, there's been a cry from creatives about getting respect and being remunerated properly. And I know for a fact that sometimes for creative individuals, um, it's difficult for you to to not do what you love, because when you're passionate about something, it's the only thing you want to do. But sometimes, you know, you don't have an opportunity, you don't have available space in the market to do the thing that you love. And so a lot of persons have to resort to plan B, getting some sort of nine to five, which doesn't really drive them, but they're just going through the motions because they have bills to pay. So I'd like to be able to establish NG communications, to be able to provide employment for other young people in the creative industry um, so that they can really utilize their talent and also not just 
you do what they love, but be paid well for doing what they love. So, wh- what was what would you say is the worst advice anyone has given you? <laughs> okay, so I remember when I was starting out. This is just before I. I spoke to my mentors about pricing and so on. I could remember somebody called me and I gave them a figure for a particular, and this is somebody who was also involved in media and who also had an advertising company. I didn't have one at the time. I was just starting up. And uh, so she said, how much would you charge to voice this ad? So I gave her the figure. And trust me, it was not a very large sum. And she's like, is that to just voice the ad or is it to write the ad, to, to write the script and voice it? So I was like, no, it's just to voice the ad because it's a generic ad, uh, which means it does not have an expiration date. It can be aired for years and years. And every time it's played, um, the, the, cl- the client benefits because they get a, a potential customer, they get a new customer. And also the station or the media benefits because they have to be played, uh, paid every time the ad is aired. And she said, um, you have to charge a little lower than that because you're going to run yourself out of business. <laughs> and I'm like, wow. okay, so I said I should sell myself short and I should charge next to nothing. And then I'm going to be guaranteed, you know, longevity in this field. It just didn't seem like it made sense to me. And I remember that really broke my spirit. I didn't take the job. Uh, because I was not going to allow her to try to persuade me for settling for loss. That was not going to happen. Um, I felt like if I had done that, I would, it would be a brave injustice to myself. Because you came to me because you think I have something that you need and you want. I have something to offer you. So why would you not want to um, pay me you know, the amount that I, I requested? So I thought it was a very rude and it was also very discouraging. And I reached out immediately my mentors and they advised me to you know not settle for less and to know your value and um in the chat room esther said excellent voice articulate eloquent speaker i wish you all the best oh thank you so much and denise asked how do your friends react to your um to you being in business uh a lot of my friends are very supportive um in fact, my best friend is one of my biggest clients because she has a, a, a business and she'd often call upon, my, call upon me to provide services when it comes to scripting a, an ad or just voicing or recording something. So they're very supportive of me. I haven't really met a friend that was jealous or envious or didn't support my vision. Um, so I'm very happy about that. And I also have a very close friend. We work really well together. Um, we feed off of each other's creative energy. And I think we make a very good business, you know, a very good team. So, so you work um, with um, Hits and Jams? And yes, Stan? currently employed at Hits and Jams as the co-host of the morning show Jumpstart. How, how does uh, that, your current employment position you to do what, you, what you're doing with NGC? I think Hits and Jams has established themselves as one of the leading entertainment companies in Diana. And so for that reason, we do have a very large audience. And it's not just restricted to uh, local listeners. We have listeners across the diaspora and internationally as well. We also have a presence, strong presence online. And so I think working at the peak hour and doing a morning show that's very popular um, opens me to a larger clientele. Uh, so a lot of these lot of persons hear me on the radio and they also would hear some of the ads that I would have produced playing on the radio during my, my show or you know, at other times for me. And they'd reach out to me, they'd find a way to get my contact information and they'd either email me or give me a call and then we'd work things out from there. So I think working at Hits and Giants has certainly allowed me to become a lot more visible in the public domain and to help persons to understand just what I have to offer and also make me um, just a little bit more available to potential clients. For those, for those young people who are thinking about getting into the field of voiceover and, and radio, using their voices, what advice can you give them in terms of developing your voice? You have to 
first you have to be very kind to your voice and you have to know how to protect it and care for it. If you're going to get into this field of work, you you want to start to reduce the amount of um, shouting that you do. Uh, you have to watch the beverages that you drink. You want to stay away from very cold beverages um, that can damage your vocal cords. Uh, you want to try to not speak as much. And this is a part uh, of it that my friends sometimes find it very hard to accept that I sometimes I'm not able to speak during the day, especially when I come off air, I'd have to just be quiet for about an hour or two to just rest my vocal cords um, because you don't want to do any sort of damage to it um, because it can take a very long time for that to heal. That would mean you have to stay off from work. You can't do, and I can't contribute to energy communication. So I try very hard to protect uh, my voice. You have to protect your instrument. You have to understand your instrument. Do your research. Know how you know sound is produced. To know how your your vocal cords and all of the other elements of voice work, um, and try your best to care for it properly. And you also want to place a lot more attention on you know your pronunciation and understanding language overall. Um, I think when I really became a lot more conscious of the way I speak is when I started acting because you came to learn doing acting that. While you may know where the scene is going or how the dialogue is going to unfold, the audience is discovering it bit by bit. You have to be very deliberate. You have to breathe properly. You have to project and you have to speak clearly. And so via that, I was able to really understand some, some speaking techniques and all of that. So you really just have to do your research from now if you're really serious about doing that kind of work. Um, yeah. What, what, what? What is um, your deepest fear about doing business in Guyana as a young entrepreneur? Uh, I think my deepest fear is probably not being so in tune with the changes that are happening in the in the marketplace that I become irrelevant i think mm -hmm. so i think i have to con continuously learn and study and uh, try to ga garner as much knowledge as i can about the field that i'm in whether it's radio or you know energy communication services and communication field and to just really have an understanding of what is required to stay relevant because i think the minute you lose your relevance you lose you begin to lose your business you know and if you're looking to create wealth and for me my long-term goal of, of not only creating wealth for myself but creating employment for other young people and to create a sustainable business um, that will just be disastrous if I if I were to lose that so I think that's my biggest fear um, also running into probably dishonest customers um, that's another big fear of my because especially when it comes to um, working with persons who are not in Guyana, uh, where you'd have to probably email a demo of the ad to ensure that they're okay with it before, you know, we can complete payments and so on. Sometimes some, I've had the unfortunate experience of doing that and then not hearing from the person ever again. Mm. And you know very well that they have that material and they probably, you know, are using it. How, um, do, you, how do you protect yourself? Right, so I try to work out contractual arra uh, uh, arrangements now. <laughs> Twice shy, <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm working on that actually at the moment with with a lawyer uh, to just ensure that everything you know going forward is bound by contract, um, so you don't get you don't get burned in the long run. Hmm. How do you measure success? I think success for me is being able to do what you love and being able to impact, impact the lives of other people. I think I, I would have achieved success if at the end of the day, um, I know that I was, I was able to contribute to the development of others um, than I know. Because I, if, I, if I exist in such a manner where 
my business becomes so successful and I'm getting a lot of money and I'm able to travel and I've got full, you know, financial freedom, but I would not have been able to make any sort of real meaningful investment in another person's life. I don't think I'd be very happy. I'd be rich, wealthy, <laughs> certainly not happy. So I, I really want to be able to achieve that goal at some point in my life, to be able to give back, to invest, to contribute to the development of other people. I want to be, you know, in my 40s and to have meetings, seminars, and up and coming young people who want to get into business, teach them the ropes, tell them about some of the mistakes that I would have made as a young entrepreneur myself and help them to avoid getting caught up in the same, you know, hurdles and challenges and just helping them to really navigate through this new experience. I think it's very applaudable if uh, young people want to take up the risk of entrepreneurship. And I think those who uh, would have already established themselves as entrepreneurs in the field, those older individuals who have had years of experience, I think it is uh, incumbent upon them and they do have a very strong responsibility to find a way to nurture youths who want to get into business. So I want to be able to be positioned in, in that respect at some point in my life and to really help young people who want to create wealth for themselves and to have a you know, different sort of life. Let me go to the chat room. It seems to be um, jumping here. So, okay, let me see. Denise asks, how do, you, how do your friends Oh, I asked it before. Um, how can the government help young people in business? Um, I think uh, what the government needs to do, and I will, what I would like for them to do, is to probably just take a little bit of pattern off of the government of the Republic of Zambia, I think. In, in, in Zambia, they had this prevalence of youth unemployment and youth underemployment. And so what they decided to do to combat that as a solution was to implement a youth development fund. And so this fund basically empowers young people in the area of capacity building and also in the financial business, providing funds for them so that they can um, just have a successful startup so that they can invest in a business idea. I think that's very important. Um, I'd love to see the government hosting national business seminars uh, for young people. A lot of us um, would have been introduced to business in secondary school. Um, and even before you move on to tertiary level, um, a lot of persons just want to start up a business and they feel that they, you know, their confidence and their, their, their ability or their capacity to do so and to start up a business and have a successful business. Um, I think it's important for the government to train young people, not only in the, the, on the, in the hard skills, but also some of the soft skills that are necessary for a successful um, business uh, establishment of businesses, and also to do a lot of follow-up training so that persons can really understand the business market and how to stay relevant and how to continue growing that business that the government will help them to you know, establish. And Denise asked again, um do you see a space for crowdfunding in Guyana? I certainly do. I actually had that idea with my last year. My friend and I sat and discussed that. We wanted to host a, a youth, a sort of like a youth expo, but not necessarily an expo, but we want to invite young people who have, you know, really interesting business ideas and business models to come up, submit some applications, and we probably go to a national venue like the National Park or the national stadium and we allow them to pitch to do like a pitch to investors and even to the general public um persons would visit their various booths and as you visit a booth the a potential entrepreneur will explain to you in detail what they plan to do whether it's a product or service that they want to offer to the local market and uh, I think at the end of that activity, what you could certainly do is pool the resources that would have been gained from admission or from sponsorship for the event. And then collectively, we could probably find a way to vote for, you know, what you think it would be the most, you know, successful business idea and to certainly help that young individual to, 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 to make, you know, manifest that idea and oh. bring that business to life. 
So uh, that was something I actually thought about doing, um, but it requires a lot of planning and it requires a lot of support. It's not something that an individual should or can do on, on their own. So and it requires all, all of the stuff to it. And Bob G asked, um, which books would you recommend for young entrepreneurs to read? I am currently reading a book written by John Maxwell. It's called The 15 Invaluable Laws of Growth. Mm. And I think every young person should grab that book. In the book, he speaks about some of the gaps that prevent us from reaching our full potential. And some of those gaps might be the age gap, thinking you're too young or um knowledge gap thinking you don't know everything there is to know um, and that may deter a lot of persons you think you have to and it actually would have deterred me because i am uh, a perfectionist you know at heart and um, sometimes I sit any, and i think i need more? to know everything there is about this before i i, I make a move and the, the fact of the matter is conditions won't always be ideal and you won't always know everything there is to know i believe in being a student of life and uh, and, and uh, to committing yourself to lifelong learning um you would always know everything there is to know but as long as you do have life and you're actively involved any more will, books any more books um Nuria, or just um, that one uh, there's another i really love john maxwell also love les brown um there's this other book by um i can't remember his name right now senior moment in progress um but it's called oh his name is dennis kimbrough the author and it's oh. called think and it Think and Grow Rich. Um, uh, so that book, and also another book called Sometimes You Win, Sometimes You Learn, <laughs> some other really good principles in that. And Bob G asks, uh, have you ever felt like quitting? Oh, yes. Why? Uh, um, <laughs> there was a time I, I, I pride myself on efficiency and delivering quality service to my client. And um, like I said before, sometimes you may not always know everything there is to know. Admittedly, I don't have all of the technical knowledge when it comes to producing an ad on my own. Um, and I also, even if I did, I wouldn't want to do all of that by myself. I'd want to give that to a young technical engineer to assist me in the production. So what happened was um, a client came to me for an ad. Uh, to produce an ad. It was a 30-second generic ad. Generic ads are a lot more uh, expensive, for lack of a better term, than the promotional ads because promotional ad ads have a timeline. When it gets to the, time, the end of the timeline, it's expired, it's done, you're not going to hear it anymore. Uh, so when it comes to generic ads, I'm very serious about that. So the client wanted it two days later. Um, I said, Sh certainly, I'll get that to you. Um, in, in that time frame and I spoke to the technical engineer he gave me all assurance that he'd get it complete and then he left the country and he completely neglected the job and so now I had to find an alternative technical engineer to work on the ad and he was working on something else at the time and I'm sitting there going this client is going to think I am so unreliable and I almost threw myself in a fit. I became so depressed thinking about it because um, I don't like, I don't, that's, I don't that's, like that's negative funny. commentary. And I don't want a client to ever have to say, you know, I gave Miri this job to do and she didn't do it. Or, you know, they probably would have had their own timeline and getting the ad off to a media house and I'm holding them back. So I, when that happened, I just... I felt like, oh my God, people can be so unreliable. And why would you give me the award? And why would you lack the common courtesy and decency of at least sending me an email or a text or giving me a call to say that you will not be able to do this so that I can you know, have some alternative arrangements set up in, 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 a, in, a, in a, you know, good enough time to still get the ad off to the client. So in that moment, I just felt like, um, you know, Am I really, am I really cut out for this? You know, can I really deal with it? Um, so well, I've been... we have to, we have to actually end there because you know we've we've gone over time, but no, not sorry. not to cheat, not to cheat, Bob, um, Bob G. Sorry, actually, it's Ralph. You asked, what motivates you? Um, I think really leaving a legacy, wanting to leave a legacy, and wanting to have a meaningful life is what really drives me. I like that. Uh, I, I like think 
uh, at the end of the day, you may, you may not be around for, you know, time is not promised to no one. You don't know how long you have on the face of the earth. But I think it's so reassuring to know that you can create something that can outlive you. And that, you know, for the time that you spend on the face of the earth, you can do things that not only help with your professional growth and development, but also contribute to the development of your country, contribute to the development of other people who, are, who will be directly or indirectly um, involved in the process. Um, so I think really just wanting to have a meaningful life and to leave a, a, a good legacy is what drives me. All right. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing yeah. your time with us, Nuri. And I wish you much, much more success. I know you are going to, the stars are the limit for you. Um, you. You are going to do very well. I love your attitude. I love your commitment, passion, and drive. So really, thank you. I think we are all very fortunate to have young people like you um, in Guyana. And thanks. You're most welcome. And thank you for having me on the show today. You're I welcome. wish you much success in all that you're doing with the web series. Thank you very much. You're Good welcome. night. Bye. Good evening. Good evening.